All right, guys, you asked for it, and here we are delivering our complete guide to riding Amtrak. All right, in this complete guide to riding Amtrak, we're gonna give you everything you need to know from what to ride, where to ride, how to book it, how to get the best price, and what to bring, everything you need to expect. And then some. <laughs> and then some. So to start out with, you gotta know where you're going. So let's talk uh -huh. about the trains available on Amtrak. And Amtrak does their trains by giving them names. So a train from Chicago to Emeryville, San Francisco is the California Zephyr. From Chicago to Seattle is the <laughs> Empire Builder. Each train has a name mm -hmm. and that's important because every time you switch a name train you're you're gonna be switching a train with a layover and you right. want to avoid that if possible, right? Right, yes. Uh, the, the more trains that you're on, obviously your trip can become a little bit more complicated and a little bit more costly as well uh, because every time it, the trains are not hop on, hop off, if you're doing a whole, you know, from say Chicago to Emeryville, San Francisco, it's not hop on hop off you can't get off in the middle and then get back on without getting a new ticket so that's one of the things that we need to understand at the very beginning is that you need to make your plan from point a to point b what that's going to be because that's where the cost changes start to take place correct so it does get confusing when you look at the amtrak uh, system map because <laughs> every train is the same color mm -hmm. on their map so when mm -hmm. you look at the map you can't really tell which train is going where. So right. we have made a map, and we'll put it on the screen here for you, that shows each name train, and each one has a different color. So it's pretty easy to look and see where you want to go and how many trains it will take you. Mm -hmm. And that's important because, for instance, if you want to go to Detroit, uh, from Detroit to Atlanta, which are my two home cities, <laughs> uh, it will take you three trains to get mm -hmm. there, even though that's only like a 12-hour car ride mm -hmm. it'll take you three trains and several days just because of the way the trains are laid out but for instance if you want to go all the way from like i said chicago to seattle which is way longer you can do that on one train so mm -hmm. when you're planning an amtrak vacation you want to kind of pick where you're going to get the most value for your money right and like she said every time you switch a train it mm -hmm. gets more expensive so go as far as you can on one train get on another train go as far as you can and mm -hmm. then get on another train and go as far as you can mm -hmm. if you're planning kind of like a roundabout right. trip instead of switching trains every right. six or eight hours or something like that yes because that makes your focus more about the train rides as opposed to doing things when you get off of the train so that's something to consider as well okay so on this map there are several types of trains too that's the second thing you need to understand mm -hmm. is that there are basically four types of trains. There's uh, long distance mm -hmm. sleeper car trains, and on those you have superliner trains and viewliner trains. Mm -hmm. Then there's also the Acela train, which is, well, there's only one of those in the whole country, and it goes from Washington DC to Boston. It is the high speed Amtrak train. Uh, and then there are what we call short haul trains, which is, like day trips day mm -hmm. trains there's no sleeper car it's only coach or business mm -hmm. and they're just going to go like from chicago to milwaukee chicago to detroit mm -hmm. or something short mm -hmm. you know like yeah. that and some of those are like the hiawatha or like the down easter so some of those northeast regional mm -hmm. quite a few of them are in that northeast area of the country right so of the uh the sleeper cars you've got the super liners and the view liners and the reason there's two train, two different types of sleeper cars is that trains that go to New York have to be shorter uh, because of the way that the city was built. They can't get a super liner in there, <laughs> so they have a view liner, uh, and it's a one-level train, single level. All the rooms are on the same level, mm -hmm. but the rest of the country, basically everything going from Chicago uh, west, is a superliner and those are double decker two level trains mm -hmm. and they do have more amenities because the differences are on a superliner 
you're going to get the observation car. Mm -hmm. Viewliners do not have them. Right. And you will also be getting, for the most part, traditional dining, which is the mm -hmm. better type of dining on a Superliner. So uh, those are the amenities you get now. The Viewliners do have more room because they're only single level. <laughs> you do have more headspace uh -huh. on those. So that yeah. is kind of nice. <laughs> uh, and then the Acela is... There's no sleeper cars. They, they will serve you meals on mm -hmm. there. Uh, and in those, there is a first class and a business class. First class is the higher mm -hmm. class. Business class is the lower class. And then on the short haul trains, you've generally got coach and uh, business and, class. And business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the difference, I think, when you're looking at trips, so you can't choose between a Superliner and a Viewliner Correct. for your particular train ride. You're getting what you're getting because, like Rob said, there's height restrictions um, in you know on certain lines as far as like tunnels and bridges and stuff like that that the trains have to traverse. So there are height restrictions for those, and that's how come the view liners are mainly up and down the east because that's where those mm -hmm. restrictions are. And then you'll see that the super liners are generally the ones that go across the country out west and back because there aren't those height restrictions there. Yeah, that's a really important point that you. You don't get to pick mm -hmm. which type of train each mm -hmm. name train only has one type of train that does right it. they don't switch like you may you won't get like a view liner on a monday mm -hmm. and a super liner on a tuesday right. it's <laughs> always going to be a view liner just because that's what it is mm -hmm. uh so now let's talk about the different types of tickets or types of classes you could get on each train uh so like i said in the in the short haul trains it's just business mm -hmm. or uh coach and a lot of people ask if business is worth the mm. upgrade generally we would say <laughs> no uh, mm -hmm. because on a lot of the trains business class is just coach class with free drinks so unless you're gonna drink like thirty dollars worth of pepsi yeah uh, or whatever on on the train maybe not worth it there are a few instances though where i think it is worth it mm -hmm. and that would be like the coast starlight mm -hmm. definitely worth it uh because sometimes they have their own observation car yes and that's actually a unique setup because it is a superliner sleeper train as well that also has a first class car in it and so you don't see that in a lot of in any of the other uh, sleeper car trains especially the super liners that have that first class option and that one's the one that runs from uh, Seattle down to Los Angeles now on the Acela uh, first class versus business class you have to choose one of those is it worth it for first class mm. uh, first class you're gonna have seats that are th three wide in the car business class they'll be four wide and you will get fed in first class mm -hmm. generally though that price is really high mm -hmm. uh, the other thing you get with that is access to the metropolitan lounge so mm -hmm. if you add it all up probably save the money and, <laughs> yeah. and get business class uh, we've done both and I, I think business class on the mm -hmm. Acela is just fine right? Mm -hmm. it is because you're really just I mean the only difference there is you're getting like you said that meal and access to the metropolitan lounge um, so it, it just it's a it's a pretty big price difference for the most part if you can find a ticket that's a little bit you know that's not as big of a price difference between business class and first class on the Acela then go for it but generally that price difference is quite big <laughs> yeah yeah uh, then we move on to the view liner which is mm -hmm. all the trains that have sleeper cars that go through New York so on the view liner you've got a roomette and you've got a bedroom and you've got an accessible bedroom mm -hmm. and you can also get a coach ticket mm -hmm. uh, so there really aren't as many types on the view mm -hmm. liner right but the 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 roomettes are kind of controversial on the view liner <laughs> because each of these the view liner and the super liner has an older type of train mm -hmm. and a newer type of train right so it's the view liner one or the view liner two super liner one super liner two and again you won't get to pick which one you're in they'll just put you in one of them and mm -hmm. what we found is generally each actual train that leaves the station has one of each so if you're getting on the Silver Star from New York to Miami, the train will have coach class uh, cars. It'll have 
a view liner one and a view liner two. That just tends to be the way they do it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you buy your ticket, they'll just assign you a room and a car. It'll be like car 2745, and you won't know if that's a view liner one or a view liner two mm -hmm. until you get to the station, walk out to the train, find your car, mm -hmm. you look up and you say, oh, I'm on a two <laughs> or I'm on a one. The issue with that is, is that on the superliners, the one and two are almost identical, mm -hmm. but the, the difference is uh, yeah. somewhat negligible. <laughs> the view liners are very different. Mm -hmm. So, yes. uh, let's talk about the room mats yes. on the so, view liners. So the room mats on the view liners, the major difference, other than just the looks and the change in the upholstery, is the fact that in the view liner one, you have a commode and a sink inside your room mat. In a view liner two, they took that commode out. You still have the sink, so you have a little bit more space, and you don't have the you know issues or concerns that a lot of people have about having a commode inside you know a small space like that. Especially if you have two of you traveling <laughs> in a view liner roomette, it's a tight squeeze with it. So it's just it's it's you know a preference. However. Like Rob said, it's not you don't get to choose which one you're gonna get. And and the other thing about this is that even if you get this, you know, the one car assigned to you, and that happens to be a view liner two, and you loved it, you didn't want the commode in your in your room, that's great. And then on the way back, you get the same car number assigned to you, so you're like, oh good, I'm gonna have the same car. And then you get in there, and it's a view liner one because they changed the car numbers all yeah. the time. So it's it's really just a guessing game. There's absolutely, we've spent quite a bit of time trying <laughs> trying to figure, figure it all out and trying to see if you could specifically get one or the other. And there's just no way of doing that because they are constantly um, rotating those train cars. Yeah, and the other thing that you can't figure out is which way you'll be facing east or west because mm, right. generally they put it on one way but mm -hmm. sometimes the cars flip so you really won't know what you're getting which side you're facing and which kind of car you're in or which type of room you have <laughs> one or two until yeah. you walk up to that train and of those of the viewliner which one is your favorite the one or the two um i like the two because it has more room um, I feel like, and it just feels newer. I like some of the the different uh, amenities they've added to yeah. it. Yeah, I love the two. <laughs> Whenever we're on a view liner and I'm walking up to the train, and you'll know right away because the outside is yeah. shiny. On Much two, shinier. <laughs> if you're getting on a one, it's gonna the outside is gonna be dull. Mm, like it's gonna mm. look like it's gonna look older. It's been around for a minute. If you see the two of them next to each other, you'll know which one is the, yep. is the two. Uh, and when I walk up and I see that we have the two, I'm like, oh, yes, we have the two. <laughs> because it's it's just nicer. Yeah. There, there's really no Yeah. In our there. opinion, that's the one that we like. But some people really want to have that commode in the room, and they prefer that one. It's yeah. just, it really is just preference. It's not a matter of it's better or worse. It's really just preference yeah. on that. And then on the bedrooms in the view liner, they're basically the same layout. It's just mm -hmm. the newer the newer car of the two mm -hmm. seems nicer. Mm -hmm. But there's not a lot of difference no. in the layout. No, it's pretty much the same. The upholstery on the seats is different. Instead of blue, it's that kind of burgundy color. Um, but yeah, it's basically just, it's, it's basically the same because the bathroom is the same size, the sink is the same size, the room is the same size, not much changed. Now I will say the biggest difference probably of any room in Amtrak system is the accessible mm -hmm. bedroom <laughs> in the view liner because mm -hmm. the accessible bedroom and the view liner too is like a palace. It is. It is huge. <laughs> it has its own shower with mm -hmm. a seat. It has a toilet in there mm -hmm. with a curtain you can pull. Mm -hmm. I mean, a really big sink too. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's really quite a bit of room in there. It's nice. Yeah. That is the nicest room on Amtrak, mm -hmm. pretty much by far. Yeah, which is actually quite nice if you have a mobility device like a walker or a wheelchair of some sort. There's plenty of room in there. It's perfect, and yeah. the door is ginormous, so you have absolutely no problems getting in and out of that room. That really is. It blows away the, else. the accessible <laughs> bedroom on mm -hmm. the on the Viewliner one. Yeah. So, uh, moving from Viewliner to Superliner, which mm -hmm. is anything going Chicago to the west mm -hmm. uh, or south, is the Amtrak double-decker train. And 
most of these, other than the co-star light, you just have coach. The rest mm -hmm. of them really don't have business class. Mm -hmm. So you're going to either be in coach or a sleeper car. And you have a couple more options on the Superliners. Mm -hmm. You have roomettes. Mm -hmm. You have the family bedroom, which is interesting. You have mm -hmm. the accessible bedroom. Mm -hmm. You have the regular bedroom. And you have a bedroom suite, which is really just... Two bedrooms, two bedrooms put together <laughs> and they open a door mm -hmm. in between them right so you have all those different room types on the superliners yes yes and like you said the most intriguing one is that family bedroom and what's interesting is that when you go in and you're looking at pricing and trying to decide what to get you will oftentimes see that the family bedroom is less expensive than a roomette so people sometimes have a hard time choosing between those two now note this there's only one family bedroom in each train car on mm -hmm. a superliner and it is on the lower level now this room sits directly over the wheels so there's going to be quite a bit of noise down there and quite a bit of movement so if that's going to be an issue for you you don't want to choose this room. Now, it is also the most unique in that you can have the most amount of people in that room. You can have four people, it's a four berth in that room. And it's generally, so you have four beds in there and that's about all that there's room for. So there's no bathroom in the family bedroom, which is what makes it different than a regular bedroom, is there's no bathroom in a family bedroom. You do have to go out um, in the hall to use the restroom, the public shared bathroom in the hall and the shower out there as well. So there's really only room for the big sofa that you sit on, one seat, one seat that's by itself across the way that helps to make one of the lower beds. And then of course, um, there's a closet area as well. So they have two full grown adults could sleep in there and two children can sleep in there because two of the beds are, you'd have to be shorter than five feet tall to sleep in. Mm -hmm. So that's two of the beds. And then the two other beds are generally the same size as the bed, the all the other beds right. in, in the other accommodations, specifically like in comparison to the other bedrooms. So the family bedroom is basically for a family of four. Um, if you've got two kids with you, smaller kids, not teenagers, unless they're under five feet tall, um, to sleep in those two shorter beds and there's no way to make those longer because they take up the width of the bed of the room um, with those two beds as opposed to this way the lengthwise which is the two other beds are almost as long as the train is wide and then those two beds take up that um, with the other the other direction so it's for four people which is what's interesting yeah. the the other great thing about the family bedroom is it does run the width of the train mm -hmm. so you do have a window on each side of the train yes. so if you're on the california zephyr or you're on the coast star light which is two big ones mm -hmm. sometimes the probability that people really are like i want to be you know if you're on the coast star light you want to be facing west if you're on the zephyr you want to be facing south there's no way to guarantee that in any room except for the family bedroom mm -hmm. and the accessible room mm -hmm. because those both have windows on both sides of the train in the room in the room now you will have uh the thing is you'll be on the lower level so the view will be a little bit lower mm -hmm. but it's the only way to guarantee you both views out of both sides so that is pretty cool because mm -hmm. even on the bedrooms you're only looking out one side and then you have your door the hallway and then there's windows in the hallway so you can kind of mm -hmm. see out mm -hmm. through the door through the hallway but to have the window in the room directly out, family bedroom exactly. is the way to go. Now, we have gotten the family bedroom for just the two of us, mm -hmm. and you can do that. That's mm -hmm. totally fine. You can mm -hmm. get it for one person. I've seen people in there just one person before with Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, it does it does kind of feel like all beds. Like, <laughs> like just it like is. bed, it is. beds like everywhere. You, you walk in, and you're either sitting when it's made up during the daytime as a couch. You're just sitting. That's it. That's all there is or you're laying yeah, it's <laughs> one just, or the other it's kind of all bad so on the lower level of the car it's set up the family bedroom is on mm -hmm, one end mm -hmm. the accessible bedroom is on the mm -hmm. other end there's a few roomettes in the middle mm -hmm. so on the superliner 
on the lower level of the sleeper cars, you cannot pass through the cars. That's where you get on and off the train, mm -hmm. but to pass to the other cars like the dining room or the observation car, you do have to go upstairs mm -hmm. to get a pass through. Mm -hmm. uh, so upstairs and downstairs, you will have roomettes and the upstairs roomettes are going to be your lower numbers, uh, single digits, downstairs will be your double digit roomettes. Uh, and those are almost, there's no difference between Superliner 1 and Superliner 2. We actually have a hard time telling. Mm -hmm. It's easier to tell which kind of car you're in by looking at the bathroom than right. by looking at the room. Um, so really, if you're on a Superliner, don't even give it a second thought as to whether you're on a 1 or a 2. Because mm -hmm. it, it really... It's gonna, yeah, the yeah, difference is matter. so negligible, it will really not make a difference at all for your rides but so. those the basically the room is two chairs that face each other mm -hmm. and in the day you can do that and then at night they push down make a mm -hmm. bed and the upper bunk lowers from the ceiling mm -hmm. yes yes which is really quite nice and in a super liner there is no sink in the room like in the view liner roomettes they have a sink in the super liner roomettes you do not have a sink so it's just the two seats and the armrest which is uh the stairs to get to the upstairs bunk yes uh and then the bedroom are in the same car there's bedrooms mm -hmm. in there but they're kind of like around the corner mm -hmm. and again super liner one super liner two almost no difference the, the big difference between the bedroom and the roomette is they're basically mm -hmm. about twice the size, the bedroom, mm -hmm. and the beds face a different direction. So in the bedrooms, the beds are going the width of the train, perpendicular to the way you're traveling, mm -hmm. and in the roomettes, you're laying the way you're traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, so if that makes a difference to you, <laughs> just something mm -hmm. to keep in mind, but yeah. uh, we usually get a roomette. They are tight. I will warn you. They are quite tight. If mm -hmm. you don't like tight spaces, maybe a bedroom would be a better way to go. Mm -hmm. But once you get used to the room at, uh, it is, mm -hmm. we think it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I find that it's, it's not as tight in the daytime setup. Once we have those seats laying down, there's very little, you know, other room to move around. And yeah. the, the, the top bunk is down and the bottom bed is made up. That's as tight as it's going to get. I, f I feel like during the daytime, it's not bad because you just come and go from, you, you know, your seat, come in and out of the room. Yeah. Um, but during the nighttime is probably when it's the tightest. The biggest difference with the bedroom is going to be, yes, the beds are in different direction, but also the bedroom on a super liner um, is going to have a bathroom and a sink. Yes, exactly. Not just a bathroom, a bathroom and a toilet, shower toilet all in one, and then the sink is in the room part. Yeah, and the the roomettes, uh, you know, the, the upper bunk on the roomette, people ask a lot, like, how tight is it? I, I always sleep up there. <laughs> it's tight. If, you, if you're claustrophobic, don't do it. Um, you just don't want to do that one. Mm -mm. It's, it's tight. There's way more room on the bottom level or on a view liner. Um, mm -hmm. When I'm sleeping up there, there's generally like this much space mm -hmm. between where I am and the top. Mm -hmm. you, you definitely can't sit up. Mm -hmm. um, I have actually turned around up there <laughs> once. I will never try it again. It was like doing yoga up there. <laughs> So you actually have to plan it out. Like you got to go in head first because if you go in feet first, I don't know how you'd even go in feet first. Yeah. But if you did, you'd have to go down the stairs you'd have head first. Quite a time <laughs> getting. Yeah, out you wouldn't there. be able to get out. So <laughs> that that leads to the next question people have often, which is, well, are there any rooms that have two beds on the bottom? Because a lot of times, someone no one wants to go up. And mm -hmm. the answer is there aren't, but there is a workaround. And the workaround is to get two roomettes mm -hmm. across the hall from each other. How mm -hmm. does that work out? So with that, you'd have to call. You have to call in because you're generally not going to get them, you know, either next to each other or across from each other. You're better off across from each other because the doors are directly across from each other. So you can keep the door open and chat throughout the day if, if you would like. So you would call um, the 800 number after you book and go ahead and have them set the room so that they're across from each other for you. Yeah, and then at night, 
you can each just sleep on the lower level. Mm -hmm. You have a little more space during right. the day. You can right. sit with your feet up. Right. It is pretty nice. It, it doubles your cost. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it does. But mm, yes, it's actually, if you really want that, it's better than a bedroom because mm -hmm. in a bedroom, you still are sleeping one on the lower, one on the upper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we, we have seen a lot of people uh, that do that. And mm -hmm. it seems to work out pretty yeah. well for them. Yeah. Uh, so... That is an option if you definitely both want to sleep uh, mm -hmm. on the lower level. Exactly. Um, let's move on to uh, ticket types. There is another way you can get your tickets, and that is a rail pass. If you haven't uh, purchased tickets already, mm -hmm. you can get a rail pass, which is good only for coach, mm -hmm. but it does give you rides for a much longer period of time. And right now, uh, generally the rail pass costs $499. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, they'll put it on sale for $299. Mm -hmm. So yes. if you if you want to ride in coach uh, and you, and you want to do a lot of rides, mm -hmm. that is also something that you uh, can look out for mm -hmm. because it will save you a lot of money. Yes. And speaking of coach, um, as far as seating options there, um, just know that you'll either get a seat assigned to you when you purchase your ticket or you will not get a seat assigned to you but you get to choose your seat when you get on the train so and and that depends on where you're getting on if you're getting on at some place you know halfway through a long haul route that's probably going to be pretty full already so your options are going to be a lot mm -hmm. you know more limited whereas if you're getting on at the beginning of a route like say you're riding the california zephyr from chicago to um, emeryville uh, san francisco then if you're getting on in chicago you're probably going to get a good choice of a seat you yeah. can get a window seat on the side that you want and you know get yourself all set up but if you're getting on halfway you know halfway through you're getting on in you know, denver or something probably going to have a harder time being able to really pick your seat. It's just going to be your choice of what's left kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so you can't always get a seat assigned to you, even if you were to call up. Um, if it's one of those trains where you don't get a seat assigned to you, you're not going to, you're still not going to get a seat assigned to yeah. you if you call. Unless you've got some sort of very special need, then you would signify that when you're purchasing your ticket online, letting them know I have a special need, and then they will make sure to be ready for that for you. And there are different types of coach cars. So I want to point that out too, because a lot of times we generally only show the coach car from the uh, Superliner or the Viewliner. And, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the long haul overnight coach cars, there's a lot more room in between mm -hmm. them. And on the shorter, like the short haul ones, so the Missouri River Runner, the Hiawatha, like the two, three hour rides, it's a different coach car. There's mm -hmm. not as much room in between. Mm -hmm. They're actually a little bit newer, uh, but the amenities are going to be different. Right. And that, that's something to keep in mind uh, with Amtrak is they're always introducing new things. And so when they come up with a new coach car, mm -hmm. they don't just give it to the entire fleet. Right. They'll put it on like three trains. So <laughs> it gets confusing because you kind of have to say, well, these four trains have this coach car. These have this one and these have this one. Mm -hmm. Generally, what you need to know is the long haul coach cars, the ones where you're going to be sleeping overnight, mm -hmm. are way bigger, right. way more space. Those are the blue ones that you see uh, in the videos. The kind of newer looking ones uh, that don't look like they have as much space, you won't be in one of those overnight. Those are just uh, for short haul rides. So mm -hmm. it's important to, to know the difference yes. there too. Uh, so now that you've figured out where you're going, figured out what, <laughs> what, you'll, be riding. what you'll be riding and what <laughs> kind of accommodation you want, uh -huh. next question is how do you get the best price? Mm, yes, well, Here's the big thing is that it is unlike other types of travel. When you're booking Amtrak train tickets, you want to book as far in advance as possible. That is where you're going to get your best price. The, um, the least when they've sold the least amount of tickets. So that is going to be the best time to buy your ticket 
that is going to be the cheapest price. The closer you get to your departure, the more expensive that's going to get. And on the longer rides, those long haul trips across the country or up and down the East Coast, that price is going to be, the price difference is going to be huge. We're talking hundreds of dollars in difference. So don't wait. If you know you want to go, plan it out in advance. Um, you know, six months or even more if you can, because you are going to get a really good deal. Even if a sale pops up, yeah, right? right? Sometimes the deal you got by buying as early as possible is going to be even, is still going to be better than if you did the buy one, get one half off uh, yeah. or anything like any other offers that may come up. Yeah. You know, peri periodically they do have um, discounts and, and offers that they do, but the the very best discount that you can get is by buying early. Buying early, and the second thing is for getting the best price is going not during the summer. Mm. Don't go mm. during high season. So if you <laughs> so if you buy a ticket for like February, a year in advance, that's the best price you're gonna get mm -hmm. uh, because you're not in high season. You bought ahead of time. The worst price you can get is trying to buy something in june for july mm -hmm. uh, that's just gonna be <laughs> yeah. it's, you're gonna pay top <laughs> that's dollar. the most you could and, possibly and when pay. you when you look on the site and you're looking at the tickets you can mm -hmm. see over to the right hand side it'll say how full the train is mm -hmm. you'll see like 90 percent full mm -hmm. 80 percent full every little bit that the train fills up they raise the price mm -hmm. so there's no last minute deals yeah and what she was saying about the buy one get one free is true because we've had tickets that we mm -hmm. bought a year in advance and we paid about six hundred dollars for a roomette and then about four months later they came out with a buy one get one on the mm -hmm. roomette and i was like oh well maybe we can cancel these and just get the bogo and i looked at the price of the bogo well it was buy one get one but the price was was 50, already so high. the price was fifteen hundred dollars mm -hmm. so it was you know even with the buy one get one more than we'd paid mm -hmm. uh, you know earlier in the year yep. just getting the advanced purchase price exactly so, because the base price went up because yeah. you're closer to to leaving so our advice is don't wait for the bogo if you know what you're mm -hmm. going to be doing uh do it if you happen to be negligent and buying it ahead of time <laughs> and the bogo just happens to pop up right when you're doing it then yes do it we have a whole article on on how that works mm -hmm. on the blog and and mm -hmm. so forth but <laughs> the bottom line with the buy one get one free sale is nobody ever knows when it's coming it'll just happen mm -hmm. it'll run for about 10 days and just assume it's going to happen right after you buy your ticket because <laughs> <laughs> that's what everybody says happens because it usually does <laughs> so, so after you buy your ticket they'll come out with that yeah and we do have a step-by-step -step on purchasing your ticket because one of the th one of the things we hear a lot is about how it can be very challenging to um kind of work your way through the amtrak website and purchasing tickets so if you're using the app or the website we've got articles on our website, groundedlifetravel.com, that will actually walk you through step-by-step -step in purchasing your ticket. So make sure you go over to the website. All of this information is actually going to be there as well, as well as we do have videos of every single room configuration that we've mentioned here for Superliner and Viewliner, as well as our experience on the Acela. So we've done all of those. We have videos here on the channel for you, but if you prefer to read and look at pictures, head over to the website because we have all of that there for you. Or if you wanna do both, then you will be really, really informed. <laughs> so a few tips for buying your ticket uh are that you, if you go ahead and you type in like chicago to uh emeryville which is the california zephyr uh that's emeryville is san francisco so it doesn't go all the way to san francisco mm -hmm. it just stops right before it uh, if you type that in it'll come up with a couple options it'll give you like six ways you can get there even though there's only really one way you would want to do it mm -hmm. so the only way you would want to do that trip is on the California Zephyr, but it'll give you an option for going like all the way down to Texas and then over to LA and then up. Mm -hmm. And if you if you see that on the left hand side, it'll say multiple trains. You don't ever want to book something 
that says multiple trains because mm -hmm. then you're going to be on like three trains mm -hmm. to do what one train could do. Mm -hmm. uh, so go back up and make sure you're hitting the one that says just the name. It'll say it right on there, the name of the train, mm -hmm. not multiple trains. And sometimes you'll just see multiple trains and no name train. That means you probably have to go to the next day mm -hmm. uh, because maybe the name train isn't running that day. So. It's or it's kinda, already full and doesn't have seats or It's kind of confusing because uh, it, it should just give you the best option, but it gives you all these different options, mm -hmm. and most of them are bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't want to get on like a 92-hour journey that could be done in, in 40 on mm -hmm. one uh, sightseeing train, and those are always going to be more expensive too. So, mm -hmm. uh, so when you're booking, just make sure you're booking name trains. Uh, that's the first bit of advice. Uh, second bit of advice that people want to know is when you're purchasing a, a roomette or a bedroom or something like that, they want to know if the price is for one person, is it for two people. So when you type in how many people are going, so say like for us we would put in two, the price you see is the price, total price for both people. Including everything. Including everything. Taxes and all that. Taxes. And your meals are included mm -hmm. in a sleeper car. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not included in coach. So that yeah. includes everything and total price. So if you put in one person, you're going to see the price for one. If you put in two, you're going to see the price uh, mm -hmm. for two. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and that does also, now for all tickets on Amtrak, you do get two free checked bags included in your fare. Whether you're in coach or in sleeper cars, you get two bags that are checked fit under 50 pounds And then you can also bring carry-ons. You don't have to check your bags. You can bring them There are luggage racks on the trains um, on the super liners now uh, on the view liners There's only luggage racks in coach. There's no luggage racks in the sleeper cars There are places to store one possible big bag inside your room but that's going to be really challenging so we tend to always check our bags when we're on a view liner trip and we usually keep our bags with us when we're on a super liner trip because we each just travel with one bag and we just put it right um right there on the luggage rack and easy peasy when we get off the train we grab our bags and we're ready to to go um, and don't have to wait for for our bags to come off the baggage car so that's included in your ticket as well your luggage which is really mm -hmm. quite a nice um perk good. to have that Free. included <laughs> for both for coach and for sleeper cars which i think is really great um to not have to deal with your bags if you don't so want what's to. the situation though if you're going from seattle to burbank california mm -hmm. which is where we go <laughs> to uh, visit our daughter with Amtrak with a lot of things there's there's kind of a special situation for mm -hmm, everything mm -hmm. you, you kind of have to go and learn but <laughs> so for instance a lot of stations if you're going to a big station say Seattle to Los Angeles those are two huge stations King Street Station Union Station they both have check bag services mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you'll have no problem checking your bags if that's your route but if you're going to get off early before Union Station and get off at the Burbank Station, that is not a manned station. There's nobody there. It's literally just a platform. Mm -hmm. There's not even a building. So the train <laughs> at Burbank just pulls up. It stops for two minutes, and you jump off. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you book that route, you will not be able to check your bags uh, because there's nowhere to do it. There's The train doesn't stop there long enough, mm -hmm. and... You, could, you just can't do it. So you kind of have to know if the station you're going to is a man station or unmanned station. Uh, if you're going, if you, if you see that you can't check your bags and you're like, I'm on a train, it says there's bag baggage check, it's probably because you're going to an unmanned station mm -hmm. and they don't do it at that station. Mm -hmm. Go to a bigger station and they will let you do it. Yes. And there are there is always an Amtrak staff person that will help you load your bags onto the train yeah. if you you know, if you need assistance. If you're at an unstaffed um, station like the Burbank station and there are many stations like that that are un unstaffed um, or unmanned you you know and you're just standing there like oh I don't know if I can get my bags on here 
the Amtrak staff will help you get on the train because they are trying to, you know, get people moving quickly yeah. because it is such a quick stop before they move on to the next one. So just keep that in mind. Some of those unmanned ones, though, can be very confusing mm -hmm. uh, because, like, at Burbank in particular, you get to the station, it's just, <laughs> it's, there's nobody there. There's two tracks, mm -hmm. and there's a place to sit on each side of the track. Well... You don't know which tra track your train's going to arrive on. So which side do you stay on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do kind of have to look you around. You kind of have to look around. There are signs that tell you, you know, this side train's going to, you know, wherever. And this, you know, this side's going to San Diego. This side's going to L.A. Just look at look around. There will be signs. They won't always be obvious is the problem. Yeah, and, and there'll <laughs> so be other people, So you do too. have to look around, and hopefully there will be other people. One time we got on in Burbank, and we were the only people, and our actually our, our train attendant didn't realize we were getting on, and the conductor actually had to get off the train to get us on because none of the doors had opened. We yeah. were just standing out there. We didn't know which car we were getting into. So um, the conductor ran off and walked down with us and helped us get on um, into our train car. But just, you know, you have to be aware and be paying attention when you're at those unstaffed, unmanned stations because, um, you know, it, it, they happen in the blink of an quick. eye. It they is fast. It is fast. They do not wait around. They're like, no one's here. Okay, we go. And on they go. Yeah, don't be, don't be uh, just walking around aimlessly. <laughs> yeah, don't go for a be stroll. Be right next to the track and make <laughs> yep. sure they see you mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. because yep. you got to get on real quick. So just to wrap up the buying tickets, if you can't figure out the website, you can always just call in. Uh, 1-800-USA-RAIL mm -hmm. is their phone number, mm -hmm. and they'll walk you through buying tickets mm -hmm. for you. So exactly. that's the other way you can do it. We usually buy them on the app if you have the app, the app. I think is actually easier than the website. I think so. So try that. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, but now that you mentioned the baggage and checking bags, give us a few tips on packing, uh -huh. packing for the trip. Okay, so here's the key thing. If you're in coach, you're going to want to have, uh, you're always going to want your, um, you know, your important things with you at all times. So if you're going to the bathroom or if there's an observation car on your train and you want to go to the observation car or you want to go to the cafe or you just want to walk around the train for exercise, you're going to want to take your valuables with you. So make sure you have a bag that you can fit all of your valuables into and keep those with you. Your checked bags are fine. You can keep those in the luggage area if you have those or if you've checked them, then you don't have to worry about them. But you'll want to make sure that if you're traveling in coach, you have a bag that will fit all of your valuables that you can walk around the train with. So that's what you need to know there. Now, if you are in a sleeper car, kind of the same thing, but not really. What you want is a, like an overnight bag that you can have in your room with you, especially if you're in a roomette like we are. We always have a particular bag that we carry with us that's our overnight bag that has a change of clothes, our toiletries, snacks, and we also keep uh, our electronics in there and sometimes we bring that, you know, we bring that around the train with us to not leave our, our things in, in the room uh, when we're not there because the rooms don't lock when you're not in them. So you want to have that overnight bag with you. Now the other thing that you want to make sure that you have, um, really regardless of whether you're in a sleeper car or in coach, if you have a lot of electronics that you are charging, we always talk about <laughs> this adapter. Um, and I'll, we get so many questions about this. This is probably the one of the, it's crazy, but one of the things that we get the most questions about in our comment section is this guy. It is a, 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 an adapter, and this is actually a universal uh, electrical ad uh, adapter, and so you can change it to any country that you're in. But what's important, that obviously doesn't matter for writing Amtrak, but what's important is that it has four USB charging ports here, and then it also has the electrical outlet here as well. So you can charge five things at one time. So if you have, you know, your phone with you and you have a tablet or a computer or, you know, an e-reader like a Kindle, if you have any of those, you have, you know, more than one thing with you, you only have access to one outlet in your seat. 
Um, if you're in coach, there are two outlets by the window. One is for the window seat, one is for the aisle seat. If you're in a bedroom or um, a roomette, generally there's only one outlet in the room. Sometimes there's two in the bedrooms, but generally there's only one, and this guy helps you to ch charge everything because yeah. we always are charging our phones, camera batteries, you know, all those kinds of things. So this guy is the very best link to this and not only this but all of the things that we travel with um, are in uh, we're going to put a link to the article on our website down below but you can also just go over to groundedlifetravel.com and we have a list of the top 20 things that we travel with including the exact link to this guy which is our bff for traveling mm -hmm. everywhere um, this guy actually has uh, should get his own passport and have stamps in yep. it because <laughs> <laughs> he's been all over the world with us but um Oh, the links are in that article to all of the items that we travel with from backpacks to the overnight bag that I was talking about. The nice thing about it um, is that it actually folds up when we're not using it into a bag that's about this big um, and just squishes down and packs right into our check mm -hmm. bags for when we're traveling elsewhere when we don't need that extra bag to drag yep. around. We only carry that on the train. Yep. A uh, couple quick tips for you on the train some things that you may not know if it's your first time and that is that the observation car is open to everyone mm -hmm. so it is open to coach passengers and open to sleeping car passengers mm -hmm. no matter what ticket you have you can go down there and a lot of times it is not full it is usually only full if you're going through a real scenic part mm -hmm. of the trip so mm -hmm. but it's really nice so if you're mm -hmm. on a long ride and you're just kind of getting bored and coach and you want to walk around mm -hmm. or or bored in your room at you want to walk down there totally fine to do that there's tables you can set up a computer uh and then there's chairs that kind of sit out and watch mm -hmm. uh, the, the world go by so <laughs> that is really cool uh definitely check that out don't don't get on and get off without checking out the observation car Again, mm -hmm. those are super liner overnight trains for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, tip that I would have for you is concerning bathrooms. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> probably one of the bigger complaints, mm -hmm. especially in coach, is that mm -hmm. after a while the bathrooms tend to get a little bit run down mm -hmm. on the trip due to your fellow passengers. <laughs> the so, cleanliness deteriorates throughout the journey. So I would say the most important thing for bathroom situations is just know, it's kind of like exits on a plane. Just know that <laughs> there's more than one bathroom. Mm -hmm. And when you first get on, go, go on a little scavenger hunt. Find all the bathrooms because there may be cars behind you that nobody is in uh there may be like maybe if it, especially if it's like an assigned seating one mm -hmm. your coach car may have 50 people in it the one behind you may have five mm -hmm. that bathroom is going to be way cleaner mm -hmm. um there's also depending on the type of train you're on there's sometimes just weird bathrooms in weird places because there's a lot of cars that are not normal and sometimes they'll stick one on your train. <laughs> there's transition cars if you're mm -hmm. in the sleeper rooms where there'll be a bathroom that has like a shower and a bathroom in one. That's a much bigger bathroom than the other mm -hmm. ones. Uh, so the general rule of thumb with bathrooms is there's all kinds of different bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Go find one that suits you the best, mm -hmm. and and you'll have a better experience. Don't just think the first one you come to that they're all going to be just like right. that. They're totally not. <laughs> right. Yeah, there are quite a few uh, options for that as well. And then also know that if you are in sleeper cars, you also have access to the showers. Um, and towels are provided for you, so you do not need to pack those. Um, and then they also do have like um, soap and things like that in, in the bathrooms already. So you'll be able to, you don't have to worry about getting those out of your toiletry bag unless you have a particular one that you like and you have it and you want to use it, then you can. But just know that if you're on a sleeper car, you do have access to a shower in the sleeper car. Want to talk real quick about eating if you're in a sleeper car mm. a lot of people ask if you can't eat while you're in your room mm -hmm. the answer to that is yes mm -hmm. you just tell your attendant uh that you want to eat in your room and they will take your order actually mm -hmm. go get the food put the order in get the food bring it to you right in your room you can eat it at your little mm -hmm. table That's there great. and that is fine right now if you're going to go to the dining car on most trains 
they will be sitting you with other people. So mm -hmm. just know that for the last few years, you've been able to get a private table, one or two people. Unless the train is fairly empty, mm -hmm. right now you probably won't uh, be able to get a private one. But if you definitely want to get a private one and you want to go down there, mm -hmm. your best chance is to eat early or late. Mm -hmm. Right in that middle, 6 o'clock, 6.30, you're definitely <laughs> yes. not going to get one. If you go at 8 yeah. o'clock at night, you might. <laughs> if you're say, the last one in there. What's the last time I can yeah. come? If you mm -hmm. go then... You'll, yeah, you'll and you can one. ask the dining room attendant and they'll let you know, oh, there's less people in this time slot or everybody's eating, you know, at 6.30 or whatever. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> definitely some things to keep in mind there. Another thing I want to talk about uh, is tipping. We get a lot of questions mm -hmm, about that. Mm -hmm. So if you are in the sleeper cars, you're probably going to be tipping during this trip. And there's two people you could tip, which is your room attendant. You'll have the same room attendant the entire trip. Mm -hmm. And the room attendant, when you get off the train, no matter if you're riding it the whole way to the end, like to L.A. or wherever, or you're getting off beforehand at a small station, your room attendant will help you get off the train. Mm -hmm. And so that is generally when we tip them for the whole trip. So... If you're on for three days, we don't tip them the first day, the second day. We just wait and do it mm -hmm. all at the end when we get off. General rule of thumb is 5 to $10 per person per night. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do more than that. A lot of people do less than that. Some people don't tip at all. So totally up to you. Mm -hmm. uh, one question that I got recently was, if you eat all your meals in your room, should you up the tip on that? And maybe you can do that mm -hmm. too. So Yeah, since you're not going to be probably tipping the dining room attendant yeah. you could put that towards your um, sleeper car attendant because they are doing an extra service each time for you yeah and then the other person you're tipping is the dining car attendant and on that one we usually do it right after each meal mm -hmm. the reason for that is there's usually two dining car attendants mm -hmm. and you never really know which one you're going to get Plus, at the end of the ride, they're way harder to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. you, you really won't see them. You won't. They'll be hopping off the train. Yeah, and they're usually packed up and, and leaving. <laughs> yeah. But, but the your uh, sleeper car attendant is the last person you're going to see as you get off the train yeah. because they are the person who opened the door for you to get out. And they help you get your bags out and they help you get down if there's steps or walk off the train safely. So you will definitely see them. You will likely not see the dining car attendants. Yeah. So for the dining meals, generally people tip what they feel like that meal would cost at home. So, you know, $5 per person, $3 per person, whatever, whatever depending mm -hmm. on it, if it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, something like that per meal. Again... Mm -hmm nothing is required uh mm -hmm. so whatever you want to do is sure to be appreciated definitely uh and then <laughs> guest rewards program we want to touch on that real quick because once you're on the train you want to be earning these points mm -hmm. because the points do add up so yes when you sign up for your ticket make sure you're in the guest rewards program get a number and get points right because it can mm -hmm. add up exactly especially if you're doing like a vacation with two or three different um length uh longer trains you're going to probably get pretty close to earning um you know at least the first level of status on some of those and also being possibly able to earn even a, a free ride mm -hmm. um and we've done plenty of free ones we get lots of miles um, we do have the amtrak guest rewards mastercard so we get extra points for using that as well so that's also an option it hasn't been for a while but it is likely coming back very soon they've switched banks now so that's going to be an option be looking out for that because there will probably be um, some reward points offers there but the other great thing about being in the guest rewards program is that they will email you the very first day that they're doing a sale so you will not miss out on that so anytime they're doing some type of a sale whether it's the buy one get one or there's you know half off for a particular route on a particular month or leaving from a particular state any of those sales you are going to be getting those emails first 
before anybody else finds out about it, you're going to be getting those. So you want to be in that guest rewards program because you're going to find out very quickly if there's any kind of sales or discounts available for you. Yeah, you'll also get a priority number to call mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. and that can be a huge time saver mm -hmm. because the general <laughs> Amtrak line mm -hmm. can take hours to get yeah. through. Uh, if if there's a problem, which right. you're probably calling because there is a problem. Mm -hmm. So if everyone on the train is calling this line, uh, <laughs> then you're going to be waiting it's with all be a them. Long wait. But if you have the priority number, you're going to get right through. Exactly. So guest rewards. If you get that status, you get the priority number. Get free trips. You also get coupons. You probably get <laughs> metropolitan lounge access, and uh, yeah. everything is just great. It's great. So guys, hopefully this complete guide will help you as you're planning out your next Amtrak trip or your first Amtrak trip. Hopefully you learned something new if you've traveled on Amtrak before. Uh, guys, if you have any other questions, please leave those for us below in the comments. We do read the comments, so leave those questions for us down there so we can answer it for you and answer for others as well. Guys, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and give us a like. We hope to run into you on the rails.